G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and I spent 21 years in the army, jumping out of airplanes, diving in the dirt, run down, crawl, observe, aim, put your hearing protection in, and fire. See, still got it. Speaking about shooting, my knees are shot, and I'm not getting any younger. So why would I put myself through the agony of kneeling for a lifestyle activity I love, such as gardening? In fact, I don't kneel for anything, unless it's my wife and she's asking me to remarry her. Wonder if she'd say yes. Anyway, I digress. My point is, you don't need a garden kneeler, or knee pads for that matter, when you have raised garden beds. So over the next few minutes, I'm gonna give you my five top reasons why you should give these old, knobbly, arthritic knees a rest and garden standing up. Let's get into it. Number one, let's start with the obvious, less kneeling. Kneeling in front of a raised bed garden like this is a ridiculous thing to do because not only does it hurt your knees, but you can't really see what you're doing. I'm just being silly. Ugh. Whether you buy a pre-made raised garden bed like this or make your own like this, I'm still building some more made from salvage decking. Or even this long raised tunnel trellis. The beauty of raised bed gardening is how easy it is to manage compared to the old furrow system. I grew up in a farming family. My grandfather was a farmer. And when he retired in town, he still grew his veg in ground. And I remember watching him as a kid suffer as I helped him slowly climb back up off his swollen knees with a handful of ripe strawberries he had picked from the kitchen garden. So when I finally got some land to grow, I grew the only way I knew. In ground, in furrows of course, until I got my first raised garden bed and then I realised how much easier it was to prepare the garden bed for the next crop of delicious veggies. Plant crops with limited bending and stress, not just on the knees, but also the back and neck. Manage crops like weeding. Who loves weeding? Not me, but this makes it easier. Pruning these crops and training those plants that need extra attention throughout the growing period. And my favorite, harvesting that wonderful, fresh, organic produce. Wow. Number two, easier pest management. Besides keeping the dog from burying his bone in your freshly tilled garden bed, Raised beds are a natural deterrent for other animals, such as possums. Here on our property, we have plenty of possums, but they are reluctant to try climbing up these beds and eating our crops through the night. You can see we don't have any nets over our beds, even though nature is all around our garden. But say you did have particularly brave possums, or other animals, or even cats, that think your raised bed is the biggest and best kitty litter tray ever. Well, you can easily stop them with a little bit of cheap irrigation piping, some stakes, a few dollar clamps, and five bucks worth of bird netting. If you want to stop smaller animals, such as fruit fly, use an insect mesh instead. And if that isn't the easiest and most organic way to protect crops from pests, dig me a hole and I'll jump in it. Number three, better soil. You decide what your precious plants grow in. Don't let nature dictate what soil you have to use. If your patch sits on clay, sand, rock, or even concrete, a raised bed garden will save you a ton of work trying to improve the almost impossible and allow you to get into growing your favorite veg and fruit much faster. Your original soil might be contaminated it's popular for old farmland to be subdivided up into residential housing lots. But what people might not realize is the soil can be contaminated from years of spraying heavy pesticides. So using clean soil or making your own with compost, etc., 
is a safer way to go. The best soil is the stuff you make yourself and raised beds allow you to create that soil over months and years without the threat of topsoil erosion. How does it get washed away? Every bit of love you put into this bed stays there for your plants to use and grow. As some of the nutrients and soil get slowly and naturally removed through the growing process, simply recycle them by making your own compost and what comes out goes back in. Number four, more options for trying different methods. You can fill these beds with straight garden soil, no problems, and you'll get great results. But personally, I like using the Hugel culture method of raised bed gardening, whereby the base of the bed is filled with organic waste rather than drainage or just soil. So it encourages an active and living environment for worms, other animals and microbes that in turn help to create a symbiotic relationship with my plants to make them grow better and healthier. Also the bed has better moisture holding qualities and overall using garden waste like this is more environmentally friendly than say chucking it in your trailer and transporting it to landfill. Lasagna beds. I could go some lasagna right now actually. Only one more day left of my 21 days eating only what we can grow experiment. That video is coming out next Saturday. But anyway, yeah, lasagna beds where you layer and combine compost, soil, mulch, rather than filling with just soil. And this method is repeated as it breaks down to create a rich medium all while you are still growing food. Raised aquaponic or hydroponic beds, this isn't something I've dabbled in, but I do find it fascinating. And I wanna mention it because it can be an effective way to grow veg and some fruit like strawberries. I still class it as raised bed gardening because often they are raised up for ease of use. So it has all the advantages of raised bed gardening. It just doesn't have the soil self-watering or wicking beds. Now this example is low to the ground, but you might want to raise this up on a stand and make it a essentially raised bed wicking bed. Wicking beds use less water, thus they save water. And when they're raised up, they have the convenience of a high sided raised garden bed. For those who are wondering, the higher you go with these types of wicking beds, the harder it is for the water to wick upwards. So placing a wicking system in the base of a raised bed such as this wouldn't be very effective. Unless maybe if you put a false base in the bottom of this to raise it up. Therefore, it would be easier to place this type of wicking bed on a stand as an example. The reason I have this one here, and I did have a net over it too, because the possums could easily jump in and eat the crops. But I was testing it for Bertie's garden beds and I wanted to set it up as designed. But in the future, I'm thinking about raising this up and putting it on some bricks. And I think that would be more effective and I'd get a lot more use out of it. Number five is do more gardening. And what I mean by that is the easier it is to garden, the more you're gonna get out and get into it. It's human nature to loathe doing something arduous, but if you can make a popular and fun activity even easier to do, the more you will do it. And that's precisely what happened to me. And it'll happen to you too, if you transfer from in-ground furrows gardening to raised bed gardening instead. Sure, the outlay and effort to set up a raised bed garden initially might be more than the standard old in-ground furrows method but it will pay you back in tons of food because you'll want to be more active in the garden. Get more done in a day with less knee ache, back pain and neck strain. A more productive you means a more productive garden. That'd be a good t-shirt slogan, wouldn't it? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big knobbly arthritic thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share the video around because that helps heaps. Don't kneel to garden, be like me and be a stand-up gardener instead. Thanks a lot for watching, bye for now.